Welcome Life Sciences, welcome to another exciting Life Science lesson. We are going to be revising the whole of the plant section. I know it's not your favorite, right, when we do the plant section in class. My kids tend to roll their eyes way back into the back of their head, but unfortunately it is a really important section that we're going to look at. So we're looking at the whole of the plant section. We're revising all of plants, the plant tissues, the plant organs, right, how water and food move through the plants, all of that stuff, right, and we're going to start now because there's a lot of things that we're going to need to get to do. As I said to you, you can see on the mind map, that's how we've broken it down. You've got your plant tissues, plant tissues make up plant organs, right, and those plant organs bring in the transport system. The same as later when you looked at mammalian tissues, you're gonna look at the heart and you're gonna look at the skeleton, support and transport in humans. Guys, please, plants should not be forgotten. They play a very vital role in our ecosystem. Terms, right, that you should be ringing a bell, that should be familiar to you. If not, you've got to revise, go over those things, just so that we can, all right, so that things are much clearer. Remember, you're going to be writing exams at the end of the year, or you might be writing tests, and I'm sure you want to do well. Okay, before we start, just remember one thing. Plant tissue is all about a plant cell. I know that sounds so weird, all right, but when we looked at mammalian tissue, we looked at an animal cell. So when you look at plant tissue, and guys, sometimes when you get confused if it's an animal, if it's a plant, let's look at three things. Number one, when we look at plant tissue, we're going to tweak the cell wall. What I mean is we can make it thin, we can make it thick, depending on what we want. What's another thing that we can tweak or play around with is this vacuole. A vacuole plays a far more important role in plants than it does in animals. So the vacuole is going to play an important role here. What else does a plant have that an animal doesn't have is a chloroplast. So obviously if we're thinking of plant tissue, if it's going to photosynthesize, we're going to find chloroplasts in those. So always keep that in the back of your mind. Plant cell. Cell wall, large vacuole, and it could have chloroplasts. Okay, guys, when we look at tissue, what is tissue? Same as when we looked at mammalian tissue, know the definition, right? What is a tissue? It's a group of cells, right? That was just a cell that we looked at. And what do they have in common? They have a similar structure because what do they need to do? they need to perform a specific function. Now, when it comes to plant tissues, all right, what do we have? We're going to have the meristematic tissue. That's going to be your embryonic tissue. That is going to be tissue that gives rise, differentiates into all of the permanent tissue. What do we have? We have ground tissue, tissue that packs, tissue that stores. We need tissue that's strong. We need tissue that supports, right? We need tissue that protects our body and we need tissue that transports things. Very much the same as our mammalian. Plants, however, are going to be less complex because they do less. Let's quickly go through the first, all right, tissue, right, when you look at it. A meristematic tissue. Now, guys, very simply, a meristematic tissue can divide by mitosis. So if I am a plant, all right, I'm going to draw a flower here. I'm going to draw a root here. What does meristematic tissue do? My roots can grow, right? My plant can grow upwards, and sometimes a plant can grow outwards. Anytime I have movement in that direction, meristematic tissue is going to be there. It's simple, basic tissue. Meristematic tissue is what we call our embryonic. And guys, what it means is, this is the word here, it differentiates, it changes. 
right? The same as embryonic tissue in the human can change to the muscle, to the blood, to any of the tissues, so does the meristematic tissue. It changes and differentiates into any of the tissues that we're going to look at. Okay, now remember, structure versus function, very important here. Why? The tissues are going to make up the organs. The organs are going to have an effect on how the plant is going to function. Guys, like this, everything is connected. It's not one little box, one little box, one box. It's an interconnection right, of ideas and concepts that you need to understand here. Okay, first thing we need to be able to understand is our tissue, right? First group of tissues. I'm not going to go into in detail. You have done this before. This is just a revision. Epidermal tissue is on the outside. It's the same as your epidermis of your skin, right? It's cells that are thin-walled. They're right next to each other. I don't want spaces. Why? That would mean a lack of protection. I want the cells together. But what I also notice, what is on the outside, sometimes I need to have a slightly different structure because I have a specific function. In roots, I need to have a root hair. Why? What do roots do? Absorb water. So guys, that's very important when it comes to looking at how, all right, the movements of water through plants. Next thing, what is this? It's a specialized epidermal cell, the same as the root. It is a stomata. Where is it found? On a leaf. Why? It can open and close. Things can go in, things can go out. Gases, water, transpiration, as you looked at that concept when we look at how things move through the body. Okay. Next one, ground tissue, parenchyma, packing. P for packing, all right? And that's exactly what it does. Have a look. Round, thin walls, spaces in between, large vacuoles, all right? Guys, things can move through here. They pack. I don't know if you've ever bought anything from Take A Lot. It's like that box with all the plastic in it. You can just pop it. And this color is green which means that this is chloroplasts, right? So same concept, same cell, same structure, right? But what do I do? I add a chloroplast, which means that now this tissue can photosynthesize. So where do you think I'd put this? In my leaf. Okay, think logically there. Right. Sometimes I need a little bit of support. Now look at these tissues. These are parenchyma that I've just looked at. But look here, why are these slightly thicker? And what I do here, as I said to you, what can I pump? What can I tweak? And what I do when it comes to calenchyma, calenchyma stands for C, corners, right? The corners are thickened. As soon as I thicken something, I make it stronger. As soon as I make it stronger, support. Right, so there's calenchyma, supporting tissue. Now I take that concept even further with sclerenchyma, okay? And what do I do is, there's no cytoplasm, it's just thick cell walls. Guys, if you want to see this nice and clearly, you won't believe what we do in class. We take toilet paper, right? Toilet paper makes up sclerenchyma, and you can see these fibers beautifully. Pineapple leaves, these are your clothes that you wear, right? These fibers, your tablecloths and all of that, all right? Those are the fibers. Now here, this whole structure, just cell wall, these are your sclerides, all right? or your stone cell. Now, guys, these are the nuts, the outer of nuts. If you have a guava, that's all the hard things inside. What? Lots, very thick cell walls, lots of support, and lots of strength. Right. Then what is the next thing that a plant has to do? A plant must move things around. 
What is vascular? Vascular means transport. Right, now we don't have blood, but what does the plant have? This is xylem, and xylem transports water. Anytime you think of xylem, I want you to think of a drinking straw. It's hollow, it's thin, and the water can move up it. Its partner, all right, is phloem. And phloem, all right, moves a lot of food stuff around. What do I mean by food stuff? What do I mean is plants photosynthesize. And when they photosynthesize, they, all right, food. And what does that food need to do? It needs to be transported around the plant. So we've got protection, we've got covering, we've got transport, we've got movement. Now, if I have a look over here, as you can see there, all right, xylem and the phloem, very different from each other. Guys, I'm, I'm not going to have time to go through it, but this is the kind of question that you can get. Now, this is quite a confusing question because you have actually got to try and see what am I looking for? There are three very similar diagrams. And you now need to be able, all right, to differentiate what can you see. Have a look here. Thin walls, spaces. What would this be? Parenchyma. Okay. Thickened at the corners. Cholenchyma. Look at this. Thickened, nothing. I can't see a vacuole, cannot see anything in between. What would that be? Sclerenchyma. Right, so guys, when you're looking at the plant tissues, it's really difficult. I do understand that to try, but what are you looking for? Have little notes. I'm looking for thin spaces, thin walls, parenchyma. I'm looking for thickened at the corners. What am I looking at? And remember, plant tissue, it's not an animal cell. So I've got to make sure I know the difference between mammalian tissue and plant tissue. Okay, guys, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. We're going to take a wee break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences. Definitely need a break when we're doing the plant section. Right, so we've looked at plant tissue. Now we're going to take those tissues and we're going to put them into plant organs. Now, I cannot stress the importance between structure and function. What is a plant organ? The plant organs we're going to look at are the roots, a stem, and a leaf. We're not going to look at the flower. The flower you look at later. All right, so what do you need? You need to think, what does a root need to do? Transport water. What does a stem need to do? Needs to be strong, needs to be upright. It's got to hold the leaves, strong, support, right? What does a leaf need to do? A leaf needs to photosynthesize. Oxygen and carbon dioxide need to come in and out. Leaf also loses water through transpiration. So when we look at the structure of each of those organs, we've got to think about, okay, what tissue would be best for that particular organ? Remember what I said to you, the tissues now make up the organs. All right, so guys, this, I'm going to be honest with you, going through past test papers with you, this is an important diagram. I've noticed a lot of questions are on the root, structure of the root. Now, how do I know it's the structure of the root? I know it's the structure of the root. This gives it away, all right? It's the root hair. The root hair is these little, all right, epidermal hairs around the end. Look here, epidermis, epidermal tissue. Yes, I've given this the word over here, cortex, because that's an area. But what kind of tissue is it? Parenchyma. 
when I teach this section, I must be honest with you, I give my kids all the tissues and then I make them with a little circle and if they color it in. So when they, and I give them these organs and I make them color in each area so that they have an idea of the tissue with the different structure that we're going to look at. Now, what is the function of a root to absorb water? Water must come in, it must move all the way. Guys, it's a treasure map. X marks the spot. What is X? Xylem, right? That's where the water is going to move to. What is phloem? Phloem is going to transport the food. What is a pericycle? It's a new word, but what is it actually? All right, it's meristematic tissue. Why? Because what does it do? It gives rise to lateral roots, grows outwards. So do you see? Here's epidermal. Here's my transport. What do you notice that I'm missing? Support. Why don't I need calenchyma and sclerenchyma? Guys, my root is in the ground. Right, it doesn't need support. Next time you eat a carrot, chop a carrot sideways. Guys, look, there we go. The round circle of the carrot, that's exactly what it is in the middle. Okay, a stem. Now, when we come to stems, there's a diacotyledon and a monocotyledon. And that's all about what is in, all right, the, the embryo. A diacotyledon has two all right, parts, a mono has one. Now again, when we look at it, what do we notice? This is not a root hair. Why do I know it's not a root hair? Because it's not a root. So it would probably be a trichome, because trichomes are hairs on stems. Now here, look at this, cortex. Guys, this is parenchyma, packing. All of this is like my take a lot box that I get. Now, do you notice these little things? These are called my vascular bundles. What have they got inside them? Xylem to transport water, phloem to transport, all right, food. But what have I got here? Look here at the top, sclerenchyma. What's um, underneath here? Calenchyma. Why do I have sclerenchyma and, and calenchyma? What do I want? Support. Strength, it's a stem, I want to go upwards. When it comes to a dicot stem, dicots have got this very visible circle. And that leads us guys to this. Dicot stems can grow wider. It's called secondary thickening. And when we cut down a tree, all right, each of these rings is one year's growth. Right, so we can see when we count the rings, we can actually see how, all right, how old the tree is. And the reason why we can do that is new xylem and new, and new phloem grow because they've got cambium, meristematic tissue. Remember what I said? Meristematic, meristem is areas that are going to grow wide. The sister to this is a monocot, right? This is your millies. These are your millies. Very different. Look here. Lovely ring, secondary thickening. Guys, I grow my millie and I cut it down every year. I don't want something that's going to last forever. What have I got? What's all this tissue over here? Ground tissue. What's another word for ground tissue? Parenchyma, all right? What do I have? Let me go. Parenchyma. A vascular bundle. What is in a vascular bundle? Xylem and phloem. What do you think I've got on the outside of my stem? Epidermis. And what do you think is just underneath the epidermis? Calenchyma. All right. So what have I got? Here, epidermis covering my packing and my transporting all my tissues, but just in a different arrangement. Okay, guys, here's a question. And this question is pretty much the same diagram that I've used. And as I say to you, the root 
quick, the root diagram I noticed is quite an important diagram when it comes to write the different questions. So it says study the diagram below. There's two of them. They've actually given you a nice little hint here. They've said it's a dicot root and there they've said it's a root here and obviously there are questions that are going to be on those, right? So we're linking again, right? The root and where did we did the root here? Go back to plant tissue, right? So all of them are going to interlink with each other. So the first question, provide labels for one and two. Now one, that's the root here. That's what you're going to say. And number two is the layer, the same as the root here. We know a root here is a specialized what cell? Number two is going to be, now it says here, labels epidermal tissue, right? Or you could have said epidermis, because those are the two labels that they would have been. Now, the next question, give the number of the tissue. Guys, here, all right, luckily you don't have to give a name, so if you're a little bit clueless, you can guess the number, giving the name and the number sometimes makes it a little bit more difficult, but this question is a little bit on the lower order side. Okay, but now you have to know your function. Which number gives rise to lateral roots? Now your lateral roots, right, is going to be your meristematic, remember? Meristematic tissue. Now your meristematic tissue over here, now if we have a look, that's one, that's two, number three goes to there, number four goes to there, number five goes to that tissue, number six, number seven, number eight. Now what we're looking at, this layer is the endodermis and just underneath it, right underneath it, layer number five, right, is your, gives rise to lateral roots. I'm going to give the name here, just so that you know, it is the pericycle, that's what it's called. All right, next one, number B, transports organic food. That I'm looking for is flow. Now, always think the X is always going to be xylem. Phloem is always in the arms of the xylem. That is going to be number six. Okay, so number six there. Number C, stores starch in the root. Storage, packing. So when we think about st storing of starch, Right, remember that's your potatoes, guys, your potatoes. This could be what your potato looks like as well. Where do I store things? I store things here in my parenchyma. And that's going to be number seven. The area is called the cortex, right? But the cell is called the parenchyma cell. Then number D, transports water. That X marks the spot. That is going to be my xylem, and my xylem is number four. Right, if we had to do the words, that would be my xylem as well. Okay, next question. Quite important one when it comes to the root here. Give one way, but look at the mark allocation for two in which the root hair is structurally adapted for its function. Guys, that means you must give a really well-explained reason. For example, the root hair is elongated, right, which means it increases the surface area. Do you see two marks there? Right, even though it's one reason, it's one reason with an example. What else could you have said here? Now, we're running out of time, so I just want to go. The large vacuole, you could have said to store water. That could be another one. You could have said a thin cell wall. Why? So water can move through. Right, you could have said no cuticle. 
Why? Again, for water to move through. Right, so very important that we understand, all right, the concept of how a root hair is adapted to its function. Welcome back, Life Sciences, from your wee break. Okay, guys, we're looking at plants. Plants, 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 plants. Our first section, we looked at plant organs. And then we looked at plant tissues, actually plant tissues, then plant organs. And we finished and we looked at the root and we looked at the stem. And now we're going to look at the leaves. All right, the leaves are a really important part of this because the leaves are going to be involved in quite a lot of functions that the plant needs to be able to do. Right, as I said to you, the plant, the roots absorb water. And we saw that how it's, absor it's um, structured to absorb the water. The stems, they more structured support, right? They had calenchyma sclerenchy in it, far more strengthening tissues. Now, when it comes to the leaf, there's two functions that the leaf needs to perform. So let's start having a look at that. Guys, the first thing that a leaf has to do, right, is the process of photosynthesis. Now, this is the equation that we need for photosynthesis. And the reason why I've put it up is because knowing this enables you to be able to look at the structure. So what do we need here? Now, have a look. The leaf needs the following, carbon dioxide. So somehow, carbon dioxide must get into the leaf. The leaf also needs water. Where would that water have come from? Yes, precisely. It would have come from the soil into the root, up from the stem. Now what happens is photosynthesis occurs in the leaf. The reason why the leaf is green, it has a very special organelle called a chloroplast, which when triggered by sunlight, a whole lot of reactions occur. The plant, the leaf, makes glucose, right? A sugar, which it's going to store in starch. And what it also produces is oxygen, which a gas which has to get out of the leaf. So when we look at the process of photosynthesis, the leaf needs to be able to get in carbon dioxide to get out oxygen, right? The leaf needs to ensure that the chloroplast receives a lot of sunlight. And the plant needs to ensure that there's water coming up from the root. So now let's have a look at the structure of a leaf. So guys, a leaf is usually what we call dorsiventral. It has a top and it has a bottom. Now when we look at this diagram, we need to keep in mind, I've put at the top over here, all right, the equation for photosynthesis. So how do we get things in? Well, the first thing that will happen, here's your xylem. What is xylem going to bring in? Xylem is going to bring in water. And its target is going to be all of these cells over here. They are parenchyma cells. They are called palisade and spongy cells but remember, that is a specialized name. They are parenchyma. But they have chloroplasts in them. So if they've got chloroplasts in them, they become a tissue called chlorenchyma. Okay, so what can happen here? They can photosynthesize. So we've got the water coming in from the xylem. They've got the water all sorted. All right, now I need carbon dioxide. Where on earth do I get carbon dioxide from? Okay, because I go back to my plant tissues and I know this is epidermal tissue. At the bottom on a leaf, what do I have? I have specialized epidermal cells called stomata. And what can come in and out? There we go carbon dioxide can go in, 
and oxygen can go out. So there we go. I've got my gases sorted. I've got my chlorophyll sorted because there's lots of chlorophyll in here. How do I sort out my sunlight? Nice and easy. Look at these cells over here. Where are they? They're at the top. Where does sunlight come in? I'm going to put the sunlight. There we go. Where does sunlight come in? From the top. Guys, these two layers, the cuticle and the epidermis, they are transparent. What does that mean? Sunlight comes straight through. All right, straight through. Photosynthesis occurs. All of these spaces over here, this is where the gases are also going to accumulate. So I've got the perfect, there's my formula. All of these things are going to ensure that my leaf is adapted for photosynthesis. As I said to you, you obviously also need to look at it. The next thing that we're going to look at is this concept of transpiration. Right, so guys, when I go back, let me go back to this leaf over here. Generally what happens in a leaf on the lower surfaces, yes, you can find some at the top, but generally we want the stomata to be at the bottom. The reason being the less sunlight, what do we want the sunlight for? We want the sunlight for photosynthesis. We put them here at the bottom Reason being, transpiration is when we lose water, right? And that's an important part of the, of the process. But I want to keep you this in mind. We don't want to plant to lose water all of the time. What happens if a plant, say for example, a plant lives in a very, very dry area? Do we want it to lose water? No, we don't. Right, so we've got to come up with ways in which we are going to stop that from happening. Okay, so the first thing we looked at, how is a leaf adapted, right, to photosynthesis? The next concept is the concept of transpiration. Now, this is going to link, right, to the next concept that we'll do just now, is the movement of water through a plant. Okay, so let's have a look. What is transpiration? So guys, what happens is water, most of the water that a plant absorbs, it actually loses through water vapor. What do I mean by water vapor? It's a gas. You can't see it. Okay, that's a very important concept that you need to understand. And again, that's going to move by a process of diffusion. And what is diffusion? The movement from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now guys, water loss is quite important in plants because why? Because we don't, the plants can't always keep the water because the water needs to go back into the atmosphere, right, as part of the water cycle. That's why it's so dangerous when we're cutting down trees, right, in the forest, Amazon rainforest, etc. Why? This water vapor that the plants give off are so important to the balance in our cycle. So guys, we have, all right, these stomata, and these stomata are, we go for red, are specialized epidermal cells. They are different to the normal ones. They have chloroplast in. Their one wall is slightly different to the other, and they can open and close. All right, so not only is oxygen and carbon dioxide going to be exchanged, but very importantly, water is going to be lost through the pores by transpiration. Now, if you have a look here, transpiration, right, is when a plant loses water. Now, if you have a look at this diagram over here, you might, some of you might recognize it. It's a pine leaf. And pine leaves stay in really dry areas. So look what I do. When I make my leaf smaller, what does my plant do? It decreases transpiration. If I have few stomata, what do I do? I decrease 
transpiration. If I put the stomata, if I have a really thick cuticle, what do I do? I decrease transpiration. All right. So, guys, the plant itself can have an effect on transpiration. But what else has an effect on transpiration? The outside environment. If it's hot, what happens to transpiration? It increases. If it's cold, it obviously decreases. If it's very light outside, it increases. Because what does the stomata to do? It opens up. It increases. What happens is very windy. Guys, it increases transpiration. And if it's really humid outside, lots of water, it decreases transpiration. Now that's in very important, right, because this is a very important diagram. And again, like the root, this is a question that is answer, uh, asked very often in the past papers. Guys, this is called a potometer. And what a potometer does is it measures the rate, right, of transpiration. What do I mean by that? I mean the speed. Now, if we go back to the previous slide, it's about this, right? The environment. It's got nothing to do how the leaf is, but what the environment will do. So it's an experiment that I can set up. And this is a very important one. Guys, transpiration is an important question. It's in nearly every, any one of your past papers, even this exact diagram. So what you're basically looking at is you're going to be given, say for example, I put a fan on here, which is wind, and I'm expecting the leaves are going to lose water. And what they're going to do is, this little air bubble is going to move because the water is going to go up into the stem. And how quickly or how slowly that air bubble moves will tell me how fast or slow transpiration occurs. And as I said to you, it's a really important concept that you understand that things around the environment have a very important role in transpiration. The last concept that I want to look at here is called guttation. Now what happens is sometimes the, the leaf can't lose water. Maybe it's too humid or whatever, and the leaf can't lose water by transpiration. So what happens is it still needs to lose water. And what it does, though, is it loses water droplets. And alongside the leaf, there's these little holes called hydrothodes. And you'll see the stomata are usually closed at night. So you will see these early, early morning because the stomata is closed, right? It can't open. And these little droplets, right, not water vapor, right? These little droplets is how the leaf is also going to, all right, bring about. Okay, guys, we're going to have a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences, from your wee break. Right, just get the blood flowing, the oxygen flowing. Right, we are looking at plant revision. So we've looked at plant tissues, because plant tissues make up plant organs. And the plant organs that we looked at were the roots. Remember, what is the function of the root? Right, it's to transport water, to bring water. The stem upright, right, the support structure needs to hold the leaves upright because what do the knee, leaves need to be able to do? Photosynthesis. And also, right, transpiration. The water that the plants absorb to keep the whole water cycle and everything constant, we need to lose that water. And that is what we're going to look at now. We're now going to follow, imagine you were a water droplet, how you come into the root Okay, how are you going to go up the stem? You're going to go into the leaf and you're going to go out. So that's basically what we're looking at, the journey of water 
and to a small extent the journey of the food that the photosynthesis, right, when we photosynthesize that food also needs to transport it down the plant because the plant needs to the food and it needs to store the food because that is what we eat. Okay guys, so let's have a look at this concept. There's a lot of numbers, all right, but basically what happens is the following. Follow the, the numbers, all right? There is water in the soil. That water needs to go into the root hair. The root hair then takes the water right throughout the root. Where is the water aiming for? The water is aiming for like a treasure map, xylem, okay? Now xylem, it's gonna move up here. Now this is going to be something a little bit new. The water then goes to the xylem and it goes then into the leaf, goes into the leaf and what happens? It comes out process called transpiration through the stomata. So basically we're going to look at the structure of the root. This is a new concept of how the water goes up the xylem and then we're going to look at transpiration at the end. So guys, this, you need to know the diagram of the root. Not only can we ask you on tissues, but we also can ask you on the transport. So this is just a small little slice of it. Okay, so what will happen is, water, let me change, we're going to do the blue. Water is going to be in the soil. How does water move from a high concentration to a low concentration? Osmosis. Guys, stop learning things in boxes. We looked at osmosis earlier when we looked at the cell. Now where, this is the root here, that's where water goes in. Where do we want water to go? Here, X marks the spot. We want it to go to xylem, why? Because xylem transports water. Now what do these blue and these red pathways and this apoplastic and symplastic mean? It just means that the water can choose its route. It's going to travel through the intercellular spaces. It's going to travel in between the cell walls and it's going to travel from cell to cell by osmosis. So the water is going to find all different ways, no, same, some lazy ways, some harder. Basically what it does, it gets to this endodermis, which is a Casparian strip, it's like a toll gate, and the water, this endodermis, forces all the water to go into the xylem. Okay, so now the water is in the xylem. Now where does it need to go? It needs to go up into the stem. Guys, when you think of xylem, I want you to think of a straw, because that's exactly what xylem is. It's a hollow structure, and not a paper straw, all right? A wooden straw, a, a steel straw, because that's the lignin around it. Xylem is strong. It's a strengthening tissue as well. It's not only a transport. It actually gives the plant strength to stand upright, okay? It's hollow. It's like a straw. Now, we've got to get water up the top Right, so from the bottom up to the top. Guys, it's against gravity. Okay, now how do we do that? Right, three ways. And I've put in here experiments. The reason why, there are three experiments that you link it to. And as I said to you, in past papers, I've gone and I've checked on that, and they can ask these experiments as well. The three ways that water gets up. The first one is root pressure. What do I mean by root pressure? Guys, if I'm putting water into the root and it gets to the xylem, where is the only way it can go? Up. It's the only way it can go. It can go up. Okay. Second one. All of you have done it. I should have actually brought a straw. I want you to try this at home. Take a straw, take some water, put your finger over the top of the straw and lift it up. Guys, what is in the straw? The water. Okay. So that's called capillarity. Water moves into very thin spaces. The xylem is thin. Guys, it's thin, thin, thin. 
We don't want thick things. We want water to go up high. Now the last thing, sucking force of transpiration. When you guys climb out of the bath, the shower or a swimming pool, why are you still wet? Hey? Have you ever thought about it? Why are you wet when you climb out of water? Two things. Water sticks to you, right? Adhesive. And water sticks to each other, cohesive. All right, so let's imagine this. If I had a long chain, so if water is coming in, and imagine there's a chain over here. If I pull this chain, what happens to this? I pull it up. So if I keep adding and I keep pulling, if I keep pulling, all right, and I keep giving it water, I'm going to have water at the top, all right? What about adhesion and cohesion? What does water stick to? The xylem. And when one water molecule moves, the friend says, hey, dude, don't leave me behind. And it sticks together and they move up. All right. That's a huge force. You actually have no idea. That suction force of transpiration or pull. All right. Outside here. So here's the leaf. And it's water moving out. And it's pulling from the roots. Bringing the water up. Imagine how strong that force must be for trees that are meters and meters upwards. Okay, it's a hollow tube and those three forces are going to get the water up into the xylem. And as I say to you, for each of those things, look in your textbook, right? There is an experiment for each of them. This one's simply just putting rods in. This one you use a little bit of a plant and you put like a little xylem over it. This one I actually used to do, you can actually use mercury and you can see the water moving up. So guys, very important when it comes to that. So now the water is in the xylem, all right? So it comes up to the xylem and now it's in the leaf. Here again, this is the diagram of the leaf. Look at the blue. What will the water do? It will fill all these intercellular spaces. There will be gases as well. But what is that water for? The water is also there for the palisade tissues, right, to photosynthesize. So one, why is the water there? For photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Okay, there we go. And then what else? Here, water is going to collect in these all right, spaces. And water is going to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. And that is going to happen, all right? And that is transpiration. So we started off with the root going up into the xylem. And then we get to the leaf over here where we're going to use photosynthesis and where the water is going to be lost. So again, then we link to transpiration. What have we got? I've got my stomata again, and there the process is complete. So when transpiration occurs, it forms part of the water cycle. When it rains, the rain, the water goes into the soil, and the plant can obviously absorb the soil. Or if you have a plant in your house, you are the rain. You are going to water it. Okay, the last concept that we have to look at, that's all to do with water, is the process of translocation. And translocation, guys, is the movement of, if I could use the word, um, food. Right, so what happens here at the top? Say, for example, in the leaf, I'm going to make glucose. Now, glucose often changes to another sugar, sucrose. Can you see that? And it goes into the phloem and it filters down the phloem. The xylem is hollow because the water we want to get up. But what you're going to see here, remember, phloem had companion cells, which means that as the food goes down, so it moves to all the different parts all right, of the plant. The same as the xylem has got holes. You don't have an elevator that goes from 0 to 10. 
you've got to have different floors. So you've got to have water going sideways and you've also got to have food coming down. Right, and that's how water's going to go up. Xylem only takes water. Phloem, there's a mixture of water and there's a mixture of food. And it's like syrup. It slowly starts to trickle down, right? And if there's an excess, we store it. Potatoes, our beetroots, our carrots. Those are all the sugars that we store it as. Guys, there's different lots of kind of questions on this. We're not going to have time for it. But go through past papers, see the different questions. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Until next time, cherry bye.